pretty much every wall within our home is completed at this point. We got all of our drywall up, we have paint covering all of that drywall, but there are a few exceptions. One of those exceptions being this big front wall behind me. It has been our plan all along to do our front wall with a stone veneer because it is our main wall looking out. So we didn't want it to just be drywall, which is why we didn't hang drywall when we were hanging all of the drywall because we were gonna do that front wall with a cement backer. Yeah, initially we thought we were gonna be going with a cement board backer, but in doing some research, we figured out that our finished nails that we were gonna use for all of the wood trim around our windows would not be able to make it through that cement board. So right. that led us to maybe considering some plywood, but then plywood apparently has some issues or creates issues because of expansion and contractions at your hand signal. That's my expansion, hand contraction. So we, uh, we resorted back to drywall. We're gonna be hanging more drywall on this front wall. So the drywall does not need to be taped or mudded. Sorry, Jeremy, it doesn't need to look pretty. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just need to get it up so we can get our stone product on. We did pick a very lightweight faux stone that is actually designed to attach to drywall. So that kind of solved all of the problems. Why do you make that face? Because, yeah, I don't want any stone falling <laughs> off of our uh, really tall wall onto our head in the middle of the night. <laughs> that would be terrible. So instead, we'll just get hit in the head with like a foam stone. Sounds great. So it isn't actually a foam stone. It's a faux stone, which just means that it's manufactured and it's a really lightweight product. But we checked out a lot of these different faux stone products, the ones that could stick to drywall anyway. And this one by far felt the most like stone and looked the most like stone. We couldn't decide if we wanted to do grays or tans and creams. So we ended up ordering two different color combinations, both of which have four different colors in them. So you really have to use your imagination when looking at these samples because they sent these tiny little Barbie size samples, but they did send three that are the regular size, the longer one, the medium one, and the smaller one. All of these colors really nicely fit the different wood products that we chose for inside our home. So we're really excited about this. I think it's gonna look really nice. And we're also able to use this on the backsplash in our kitchen as well, which is very helpful because we wanted the two stones to match. All right, so we know what we're using. We know what we're doing. Let's get this wall covered up. Will you mark the studs for me? You know the drill. You know how to do this. I cannot believe I'm doing this again. I know I always say two days, but what do you think? One day? One day. I'm gonna try to make it happen. Famous last words. Something extremely familiar about this. <laughs> I like it. Oops, my first little mark on the wall. It's gonna happen. No! Why do we have touch up paint? <laughs> the problem with trying to do drywall next to finished drywall is now I have to be all careful, but little stuff like that's gonna happen, I promise you. We're gonna make all our cuts on this wall with our rotary cutout tool. We're gonna start with this first outlet, and because we don't want a dusty mess ending up on our finished walls, Melissa's gonna follow me up with the shop back as we go. That's like years of experience shining through right now. We got that bottom half done, let's do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> the whole time? <laughs> I didn't realize that. 
realize it because that thing was making the same noise. <laughs> no excuse. Come on, you got one job, Melissa. One job. a short little break to warm up in the sun because it is really cold inside the house and it's nice and warm out here. Jeremy and I keep picking the wrong days to work inside versus working outside. But while I warm up, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why the front wall is so important to us. So the reason that we want it to look different and we want it to be beautiful is because we want it to serve as sort of a picture frame to these mountains. The mountains are what sold us on this property. We searched for our forever property for about two and a half years. And we became really discouraged because none of the properties look like the photos and we would drive eight hours and then they'd be a mess. So when we found this property on Facebook, we thought there's no way that it looks like the photos. But when we got out of the car, it was twice as beautiful in real life. And we just knew this is the one we want to grow old here. We want to raise our kids here and we never want to become complacent or numb to how blessed we are to look out our window and see that. And so by making this front wall and the windows and the troughs and just everything frame it and just serve as that reminder of what an incredible blessing it is, that is the whole reason that we're putting the extra work into having that front accent wall. And it is so incredibly exciting to watch it finally coming together. We got a lot done. Sort of. We're making a lot of good progress on that front wall. I've made my way about halfway up. I just had the gable end complete. And since Melissa's back there running her vacuum, keeping things nice and clean for me, I'm gonna head back into the barn and grab our son, Kaimani. I'm gonna put his young back to work. I have a job for him to do. What are you doing, son? Nothing. Nothing? I got a job for you to do. Come on down, buddy. Come on down. Let me introduce you to the scraper. Look here, just all this stuff like this right here. Let me see that. Scrape it up like that. But look, don't take up the subfloor, okay? Give it a shot. Nice job, son. I think he's got it. Let's get back to work. I should keep Kamani busy for a couple of hours. I think it's really important for him at his age. He's turning 12 years old soon. It's important that he know what it is to help contribute, putting a little bit of labor around here. We want the kids to play a role in getting this house built, no matter how big or small the task may be. Plus, our parents totally would have made us do that task. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't want to be scraping the floor. <laughs> That's why we have kids. <laughs> yeah. Kaimani got all of his work done. Nice job, son. Thanks. I didn't quite wrap up the front wall, but these guys are telling me that they're hungry. So we're gonna take a break, put things on pause. I'm gonna whip up some burgers for them. Tonight, we are cooking our burgers using our new Anchor 757 portable power station. We have been Anchor fans for quite a while. In fact, I have the smaller portable power station in my van as an on-the-go charging station. It's a little dirty because we use it. We use it a lot. So when we found out that Anchor was coming out with the new BP 757 portable power station, we knew we had to have one. The Anchor 757 power station has the most advanced, long-lasting batteries. The premium LFP batteries will remain in a healthy state even after 3,000 complete charge cycles with six times longer battery lifespan than the industry average. You also get a five-year guarantee for peace of mind. And peace of mind is really what a portable power station is all about. They're not only convenient for a three to five day camping trip, but they're really important to have on hand for those emergent power outages that can last for days. The 15 100 watt output power and 1229 watt hour capacity is not only enough to run our grill, but also items like freezers, fans, microwaves, and maybe most importantly, a 
coffee pot. The Anchor 757 portable power station also has hyper flash recharging technology, which means it will recharge from zero to 80% in just one hour with a 92% conversion rate. The Anchor 757 portable power station is a durable and reliable choice for more comfortable outings and lights out situations. To check them out, simply click our link in the description below. Now I'm gonna go get some burgers. You guys ready to eat? Yes! While I was doing the school thing, Jeremy got a couple more pieces up on the wall, which means we just have a couple more pieces to go. So today is going to be a very short work day. You know, the cartoons on this tractor are horrific. What? The, ca the cartoons, the warning cartoons. All the stickers. Look at this. Tragic. You like my little drywall origami I made there at the top? I do. Made a crane, Melissa. <laughs> a little leapfrog. I love those little guys. Little sailboat. Now you officially have one last piece of drywall. Last one. Happy day. It's not unusual to cut that drywall. Wow. To put it up. It. We're done. I got started without you. Yeah, you did. Did you get that from my bag? You well, have your I got it from my bag. bag, my personalized bag. So very thoughtful. So now that we got our wall backer on, we have the rest of the day to enjoy ourselves and have some snacks. That's different. It is. Happy about that. <laughs> so we got these snack bags and each of them have our names on them. We got six different bags and then there were also some gluten-free snacks for Nevaeh. And I thought that was so thoughtful. Every once in a while, we get these boxes from you guys that have snacks for our snack belt choice of the day. And some of them are so customized, like it's Hawaiian snacks for Jeremy, or <laughs> gluten-free snacks for Nevea, or little dinosaur themed things, or unicorn or horses for Kira, pistachios for Kaimani. Like it's so cool that people pick up on the little differences in our family and then we'll customize these boxes. And it, it's not lost on us, it's so incredible. No, it's so amazing and we always greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, it's it's really, yeah, like Melissa said, it's just an amazing thing that mm -hmm. there's so many of you out there that feel like you know us um, and care about us and you go out of your way to put packages like this together yeah. that are all unique to us. And delicious. Individually, but just the fact that you take the time out of your day to think about us and do little things like this are just unbelievable. It is by far the best part of this entire experience is just getting to know you guys and we appreciate it so much. So today's snack belt choice of the day, definitely from the heart. Thank you so much. You want attention? Always good for a hug. Your smell. Your smell. Oh, he's burp. Manny.
We're a couple days in between projects because we are waiting for a piece of equipment for a very exciting upcoming project next week. So we figured now is the perfect time to get a little bit of work done in preparation for our final grading. Not only are we having the final grading done around our entire house, but on this particular side of the house, we're gonna get things flattened off. We have a berm to contend with behind the crates that hold all of our siding that we put up on the house. We wanna push all of that stuff off of the edge to make for a nice flat surface. We can have the foundation poured for our future garage slash apartment build. We want to get a garage set on this side of the house with a tiny living space up above it. All of that is going to be done when we get our front patio poured here in the next few weeks. Before any of this can take place, however, there are some trees I want to take down and some slash piles that need to be burned. All right, we are lubed up, we are fueled up. And sharps, only one thing left to do. Yeah. I'm gonna keep the pants on this time. <laughs> so I can't lie, a big part of my motivation and desire to do this is because I'm real big, I'm OCD and I like landscaping stuff and I want this whole section here to kind of look like a clean horizon line with that drop off to where when you're approaching the house, it just looks like nothing's there. Kind of like an infinity pool. So we're not gonna have an infinity pool, just an infinity yard. No infinity pool. <laughs> infinity approach to the house. That's how I want it to look. So that one and that one, going down. Everything on the hillside, also going down. That far one on the left there, we'll keep though. We'll incorporate it into the landscape on the backside. That one, that one's spared? That one's spared. You're my sunshine, Well, Jeremy's having fun down there playing with his chainsaw, but I just got a call that our door and trim guy is on his way over here. He's going to plan all the trim around those gable end windows so that we can finally get that stone ordered and get that front wall completed. So it's going to be so exciting to see what he comes up with. I think Jeremy missed his calling as a lumberjack. It's a sexy lumberjack. How's it look? It looks good. You having fun? <laughs> yeah, I love doing this. A few things more fun than taking down some big trees. I enjoy it. It's tiring. I enjoy it though. Take a few more down and it should be good. I'm exhausted. It's hard. Well, that's good because our window trim guy is on his way here. Awesome. <laughs> Just as you're getting started. Huh? Well, that was productive. Let's get back to taking these trees down. Everything is moving so quickly now. We have gone from studs to completed walls in just a few months. And now in the next few months, we'll have cabinets, doors, flooring, a ceiling. It's unbelievable when we look at this place as a whole. We used to be intimidated to take on any DIY project ourselves, and we had to trust others to do what we believed we weren't capable of. So whether it's framing a house or felling an entire hillside of trees, learning to trust yourself makes so much possible. Trusting yourself might be faith, or it might be confidence. Hell, it might be crazy, but no matter what you call it, it's freedom to embrace just about anything you could want to do in this life. 